Okay, welcome to the chapter on marine fishes. The fish we're looking at in the picture here are juvenile spotted drums. Like a lot of marine fishes, they will change as they go through different developmental stages of their life. So the juveniles have this black and white striped appearance with these big, long, elongated dorsal fins. As we move into the adult stage, they change their appearance. So as we look at fish, those are things we want to keep in mind. They're not always going to look the same throughout their entire life. So, okay, so let's take a look at fish. <coughs> Marine fishes are vertebrates. These are animals that all have backbones. All right, so they all have backbones. Um, the vertebrae is going to be made up of either cartilage or bone. So when we get into different classes of marine fish, we'll talk about the cartilage or bone. That's a different a defining feature that helps us separate fish into their different classes. Now, the earliest first known vertebrate appeared on Earth roughly around 500 million years ago in the oceans. So marine fish are the earliest vertebrate animals to have evolved on land, on, not on land, on Earth. All right, so very primitive group in some cases, but incredibly diverse in a lot of other cases. So, all right, so here are the major three groups of marine fish. Depending upon the classification, resource, or scheme, it may be that these are listed as classes, so they all go into the phylum chordata, subphylum vertebrata, class, you might see class agnatha. These are all the jawless fishes. Okay, so examples include things like hagfish and lampreys. <clears throat> Chondrichthys. So class chondrichthys are going to be the cartilaginous fish. All the fish that have vertebrae and skeletal systems made up of cartilage. And then osteichthys are known as the bony fishes. These are going to be all the fish that have bones and solid, solid vertebrae versus vertebrae that are composed of calcium or carbon, um, cartilage. Okay, so as we look at fish, like I said, we'll kind of group them into those categories, <clears throat> call them groups, categories, or we could say these are the classes, class agnatha, class chondrichthys, class osteichthys. There is work currently being done reorganizing fish into different groups. We're going to keep it kind of broad and basic. So here's just an overview of the classification of fish, how they are organized and grouped. And if you look up top, you can see, um, let me get the little pen out. You can see here's one grouping. Um, there's our Agnatha, there's our chondrichthys, and there's our osteichthys. So again, it's kind of three general groupings, but they are, fish are the oldest vertebrates to have evolved on Earth. Okay, so let's just jump into it. Let's start looking at them. Jawless fish. Now, to be a jawless fish, something like a lamprey or a hagfish, you're going to have a certain group of features. Let's start with your mouth. Your mouth is going to be circular. There's a big strong muscle there. So we look down here and <clears throat> let me change our color, get us some something a little brighter. Here is the mouth of the hagfish down here. Okay, so it looks like a suction cup. A little suction tube on it. So they use that to help suction onto their prey and then they take those teeth and kind of scrape into the prey and rasp and kind of rip up the flesh of the prey. They can't bite down because they don't have jaws so it's more of a suction action. And then the 
jellyfish tend to have this long cylindrical body, so they attach on to the prey or whatever they're eating. Some of them are primarily just eating dead, decaying material. Suction on, and then they twist their body. They kind of spin it and whip back and forth so they rip chunks of flesh off of whatever they're eating. And we will notice that these guys don't have those fins or scales that we see in the other fish. So there's no fins, no scales, just kind of this smooth skin. A lot of times they produce a mucus, kind of a slimy color coat to help protect themselves. All right, so those are the basic features of Agnatha. Now within Agnatha, we got the hagfish. Okay, so hagfish are completely marine fish. We do not see hagfish in fresh water. These guys are going to be just scavengers. They use those tentacles to find the food, they suction on, they scrape and rip and tear and then twist their body and feed off of basic dead decaying material. These are the ones that have those mucus glands They use mucus to protect themselves. So they secrete the slimy, nasty, disgusting mucus that helps give them <clears throat> a form of protection. So if a predator were to try to eat, they gotta go get a mouthful of mucus. And okay, so hagfish are one type of jawless fish. The second type are the lampreys. Now lampreys can be found in fresh or salt water. Some lampreys start out in fresh water, move into salt water. Some lampreys start in salt water, move into fresh water, and then go back and forth. So, so they are mixed between both types of marine ecosystem. So when I look at these, said some examples reproduce in fresh water and then mature and live in salt water. <clears throat> depends on the fish. So they they have a life cycle that involves both environments. Um, some of these guys are active predators. Others are going to be parasites. Depends on the type of lamprey we're looking at. But if you look at that mouth down there, that is just a crazy mouth. So down here, this is the mouth of the lamprey. And each of these little yellow projections, those are teeth. So you look, it's got a mouthful of teeth. There's the suction cup in the center there. <clears throat> but then it's got like dozens and dozens of those little circular teeth around it. So when it sucks on, it takes those teeth and just starts grinding and scraping and ripping and tearing at the side of a fish or whatever it can prey upon or parasitize. So if you look down here, <clears throat> here is the wound from the lamprey. A previous wound. This fish is unfortunately being parasitized by a second lamprey that's sucking onto it right there and going to make another hole in the side of the fish. A lot of times they're not going to kill the fish if it's a big, strong, healthy fish, but you get smaller, younger fish, and lampreys are able to kill them as a food source. Okay, so those are going to be our jawless fish or agnatha. All right, so agnatha, jawless fish, and we're going to look at hagfish and lampreys. Now, <coughs> more, much more common when we look at the marine ecosystems, more noticeable are going to be the sharks and the rays and the skates and the ratfishes. These are all known as chondrichthys. Okay, so big key features here. Chondrichthys have a skeleton of cartilage, right? cartilaginous fish, cartilage skeleton. So the skeleton develops as cartilage and it never solidifies or we could say ossifies. That's a term for turning into bone. It never turns into solid bone. So when we look at the, the sharks and the rays and the skates, you look at their skeleton, 
<clears throat> it's cartilage. It breaks down, decomposes very rapidly. So it's quite difficult to have good, complete skeletons of sharks because <clears throat> their skeletal system just, unfortunately, doesn't last very long. Um, they all will have movable jaws and very well-developed teeth. All right, so some really amazing teeth. A lot of times, that's what we're using to identify sharks or shark remains. Shark fossils are their teeth and their jaws. Those, fortunately, for the most part, can persist. Even though they are not bone, they still have more structural integrity to them and can last a lot longer and persist throughout the fossil record. Um, sharks have a thing called placoid scale, and they will have paired fins on their body. Okay, and I'll show you some placoid scales in a minute here. Uh, typically, we're going to see five to seven gill slits that open directly into the water. <clears throat> so the side of the mouth, or the side of the shark jaw, are the gill slits, and those go directly into the water, allowing water to flow directly across the gills. So it's very, very critical when we look at fish, they need water flowing directly across their gills in order for them to breathe, for oxygenation. So without oxygenation, they're going to suffocate. So when you see sharks in the research movies, where they put them onto a boat and they put a tube in their mouth and they're pumping water across their gills, it's to keep them, continue to provide them oxygen. You stop moving a shark without water across those gills and the shark suffocates. All right, so here's the general body plan. Amazing body plan. They got this kind of elongated body plan here, torpedo shaped. These are the placoid scales I mentioned. So they're all pointing backwards and overlapping. Great, great uh, aerodynamics or hydrodynamics to move through the water. If you ever touch a shark, <clears throat> then you run your hand in one direction. Nice and smooth because your hand's going across the scales. Go the other direction and it feels like a very gritty piece of sandpaper because you're bumping into the tips of all these scales as you go the other direction. But very neat, neat design. Um, there's the gill slits I mentioned, five to seven pairs, depending upon the shark species. Mouth is in the front, some good jaws on it. And as water flows in, flows in the mouth, goes through the gills, and then oxygenation occurs in the water flow out. All right, we'll look at that. The paired fins, pectorals, anal, pelvic, etc. So we'll start looking at those things as we get into some really neat sharks. So in the Caribbean, nurse sharks, the um, Caribbean reef sharks, sometimes hammerheads, those are going to be the key sharks down there in the Caribbean. So, all right, so what do we want to know about sharks? The jaws. Powerful jaws. Generally, they have these triangular teeth. And the tooth structure is often what helps determine what type of shark it is. The side of the teeth, a lot of times, are going to be serrated. So it's not just a triangle, but then on the side of the triangle, you got all these little serrations or little teeth on them. Uh, most majority of sharks are going to be carnivores. There are some that filter feed. The whale shark, the largest fish in the world, is actually a filter feeder. All right, so the filter feeders will use these things called gill rakers in order to filter the water and what's in the water, basically the plankton load, the zooplankton and phytoplankton in the water. Sharks also have a thing called a lateral line that they use to detect movement and electrical signals in the water. And then they use these ampullae of Lorenzini 
2D 